Hey, this is Joe from SoFly, and in this video, we are going to export WooCommerce orders one by one in real time using WP All Export. So, to get started, we'll go down here to All Export and we'll select New Export. And then from the pull down, we'll select WooCommerce Orders. Now, you may notice there's a bunch of other options over here. We can export WordPress posts, pages, taxonomies, comments, users and then WooCommerce information like the orders, our WooCommerce coupons, WooCommerce customers, WooCommerce products, and WooCommerce reviews. You can export anything with WPL export. We have a lot of videos and documentation on how to do all of it. So if you have any questions, head over to WPLimport.com, check out our documentation, check out our YouTube channel, and you can see how to export all of this stuff. All right, so for us, we're gonna be exporting WooCommerce orders, so we'll select that here. Okay, and you can see that we have 5,758 orders that will be exported. And if we want to, we can filter down on some of these. And we can filter based on anything, anything related to the order, all of the order data, any customer data, like we can find all of the um, orders that were created by somebody named John. We can find all the orders created by somebody in California, for example. So if the billing state equals CA, we can add a rule for that. And you can see we have 621 orders that match that. Now, since we're creating a real-time export, our filters are kind of important, right? So if somebody creates an order on our site and their billing state doesn't equal California, then that order is not going to be exported, right? It won't be part of our real-time export because it doesn't match these filter rules that we've set up. Now, if we wanted to, we could add more filters to this and combine them. So we could look for, for example, you know, something related to the product, like the product name or product taxonomy. So we could say only, you know, dresses that were purchased by somebody in California, if we had to make some sort of special tax payment or something like that, pretty much anything. You can add as many filters as you want with operators like and and or, so you can say, okay, the billing state is California or New York, something like that, pretty much anything. In this case, we're going to keep it simple and we're going to remove this filter. If you want to learn more about filtering, we have videos on that. And we have some documentation on our website at wpallimport.com that you can check out. All right, so we'll close this accordion. And then down here, we have our migrate orders button. Um, if you were interested in moving these orders to a different website, let's say if you were you know, redesigning your site, right? And the redesign is now complete. Well, you need to move all of your WooCommerce data over. So you can migrate your customers, your products, and then your orders. And to do that, you just export each of these individually, like migrate products, migrate customers, migrate orders. And then when you migrate your orders, when you click this button, it downloads a zip file that contains all of your orders and then a template file for WPL import. You upload that zip file to WPL import. And then all of the settings are complete. You just click go and then your orders are all imported and they're linked to the customers and the products that you've already migrated. So if you're interested in that, again, check out our YouTube channel, check out our documentation. If you're doing a site redesign, something like that, if you have to migrate data without overriding the existing data on the site that you're migrating into, very useful. But in this case, we're setting up a real-time export for WooCommerce orders. So we're going to click the Customize Export File button. Okay, so this is the page where we drag and drop to create our export. Here in the left is our export file. And then here on the right is our available data. So let's click the preview button to see what we're starting with here. And these are the three columns we have. And you can see they line up with these three elements over here. So you can drag and drop to rearrange them. You can click inside, change the column name. We can go over here. And we can drag and drop, for example, the order total. You can go over here to add field. And you can search for a field like something related to the product, like how about the product name? We click save and there we go. Now, when we preview this, you'll notice that this order ID is duplicated, right? It shows up twice and that's because this person ordered two products. So each product shows up in a different row. Now we have some options over here where we can change that. So you can disable display each product in its own row. And now each order is just going to be on one row and each product will be in its own column. Now the alternative, we have a third option here, 
where we can enable this again, and then we can disable fill in empty columns. Now you can see that each order has its own row, and then each product is on a separate row, but we've kind of not filled in this data, right? So this, this data would be duplicated. It would be order 8965 again, and it's not. So we are not filling in these empty columns. So those are the two ways that you can add data. Now there's something else you can do here, right? Now you might notice that maybe you can think of a case where you might want to combine two fields into one. For example, first name and last name. Right, maybe we, maybe we don't want these in separate columns. So let's go ahead, let's get our export file set up how it was before. And then we'll go over here to add field. And we're gonna select custom export field. We're gonna drag in our billing first name and our billing last name. We'll give it a space. And we're just gonna call this field name. And then we'll drag these out to remove them from our export. And while we're at it, we'll get rid of this guy and we'll preview. And there we go. We have our name. Let's get rid of our last name too. We'll go back over and check this out again. So yeah, so this is our first name and our last name combined into a single field. And we can do this with all sorts of things, right? So we could create, um, you know, a nice readable address by dragging in all the address information. We can combine the uh, product attributes. We can do whatever we need to do. We cancel out of here. Okay. And then next up is we have some date information. So we can drag over the order date and you'll see here that we get this date information just like that. Now we have some options. So we can go in here, there's our order date. And then here's the date format. So we can change our date format. Just like that. And there we go. We've removed the time from the order date column. Now, the last interesting thing in our add field to export modal is PHP. So down here, I've written some custom PHP functions. We have two: change state, change order status. They're pretty similar, right? So let's check it out. So order status. So by default, order status is going to be exported like this, wc-completed. And that's how WooCommerce stores the order status in the database. Well, let's say I wanna change that to something else like processed. So we go over here, click into the field, and we select export the value returned by a PHP function over here. So we have change order status. That's the name of our function. Right, and it's going to take WC completed and change it to processed. We'll save, preview, and there we go. Now you can write PHP functions to do all sorts of interesting stuff, pretty much anything you need to do. We have a lot of documentation on this, and you can also just read about PHP in general. Now, the last real feature we have related to CSV exports, which is what we're exporting here, is the separator. So CSV stands for comma separated values which means that each column is separated by a comma. We can change the separator to a pipe or to any other character just by entering that in here. We'll just leave this as a comma, but if you have to change it, that's where you do it. Now for the export type, we have a few options. By default, we get a CSV, but we can go in and we can change this to an Excel file if we wanted to. Functionally, they're pretty similar. The only difference is, you know, you can kind of open a CSV in a text editor if you wanted to, and generally speaking, if you're doing something a little bit more like programmatic, like if you're uploading it to some sort of system or something like that, like some sort of external service, they're probably going to want a CSV instead of an Excel file. But as far as spreadsheet software goes, like human readable formats, Excel and CSVs files are pretty much interchangeable. Any spreadsheet software is going to be able to read an Excel file and the CSV. And then over here we have XML. So a simple XML feed. It's pretty simple. You can just drag and drop to rearrange the XML elements. And then in here, you can change the root element and the single XML element over here. And then we have some options for C data tags. Now you can get pretty far with this, but maybe your XML specification that you have to export to is pretty specific. And maybe you need to put data into element parameters or something like that. So the way to do that is 
over here with a custom XML feed. And here you can set exactly what you need your export to look like in terms of XML. We have some advanced options down here for C data tags and documentation over here to explain in a little bit more detail how the syntax works. We have a lot of documentation on this and some videos on our YouTube channel. Check it out. It goes into this in a lot more detail if this is interesting for you or if you need to set up your real-time export for XML. In this case though, for this demonstration, we're just gonna stick with CSV. All right, so that about does it. We have over here all of our data, right? So when we're dragging and dropping, you can drag and drop any data from inside WooCommerce. So that's your order data, right? All of your order data, any data associated with the customer is going to be in here, all of our item information, the products that the person ordered, like the pricing information, the stock status, product taxonomies, any custom fields. So if you're using WooCommerce extensions that add custom fields, that information is going to be available for export right here. Attributes, like our product color, product size, tax and shipping information for the order is all going to be in here. Fees and discounts, our notes, any refunds that were issued for the order, custom fields attached to the order. So if you have WooCommerce extensions that are adding data to your orders, that's going to be in here. The other custom field section is for your products, right? And then we also have some advanced product information over here, like the product dimensions and things like that. And then going back down here, other, this is just kind of a grab bag of all the things that generally people might need to export, but probably not very often. So if you have any trouble finding it, you can either search for the field that you want to add over here or check the other, other section. And then finally, ACF, any ACF fields are going to show up down there. Right, so that's all of the data and it, it really is everything. And if there happens to be something that you want to export that's not included here by default, you can just use custom PHP. You can pass in the order ID or the product ID or the user ID into a PHP function and then pull that data out from wherever it is. So you really can export anything with WPL export. Okay, so that's about it for the edit export page. Let's continue and check out our options. So this is where the magic happens. This is the option we're looking for, export each order in real time as they are completed. If we enable that, every time a new order is completed, this export is going to run and it's going to export that one order that triggered it. That's it. Now we do have some other options over here that might be useful in a different scenario, um, like our scheduling options. So with WPL export, you can set the exports up to run on the schedule. So for example, this export is going to run every Monday at 12.30 a.m. and it's going to export all of the orders on the whole website. If we wanted to, we could enable only export orders once. Now, okay, yes, the first time we run this, it's going to export everything, but the next time it runs automatically on a schedule, it's only going to export the orders that were created in the last week, right? So every week it runs and it just gives me the new orders that were added. And then down here, we have client mode. So if we enable this, and then we go over here to settings, scroll down to the bottom, client mode, roles with access, editor. So any user on my access with the role editor is going to be able to run this export. They can run the export and download the file, but they definitely can't edit it or create a new export, right? Because we don't want to allow any non-admins to be able to write code that runs on our site, right? Otherwise they could just write a PHP function that makes them an admin. So if you want to let your users come in and run exports and download the export file, this is your option. For us, we are exporting orders in real time as they're completed. You can click this link to check out our documentation, but we are just going to confirm and run the export. All right, so our export is complete and notice it's only exported one order, right? So this is going to be a test CSV. So this is going to be kind of an example of what we're going to get every time a new order is created. So we'll go ahead and open that up. And here we go. This is our order, right? Order status process. That's our order date. The only order one product. And that was the date. Now, again, every time a new order is completed on our site, this export is going to run. 
And our next step is to set up what happens after that, right? You have two options. You can use Zapier or you can use our API and write your own code. So the way Zapier works is you go over to zapier.com and then you connect it to this website, right? Then we create a new zap. They call it a zap. It's basically a task. And this task has a number of steps. And the trigger is going to be a new real-time export has been created. And then you can do all sorts of actions, like send an email, add that data to Dropbox, add that data as a row in a spreadsheet, etc. So that's what you're going to want to do next. The other option is to use our API. You can check out our API documentation over here. We have a hook, PMXE after export. So every time this export is going to be completed, this hook is going to fire. And then you can run your code. And here's a nice little code example for you. So that's your next step. So let's make sure this works. Let's go over here. Let's create a new WooCommerce order. So I'm going to add an order. Status is going to be completed. Leave the customer as a guest. Add a product. Let's give them a shirt. Looks good. This is my Z Hill long sleeve small blue shirt. $17.99. Let's add another product in here. We'll add another product. Let's give him another shirt. There you go. All right. So they have two products. And the status will be completed. We'll create it. And now let's go back down to all export, manage exports. And you can see here. That it's just run, right? This should be one record from our test CSV, but because we just created an order, now it's two records. So we'll download it with our CSV button over here. Let's download our latest export. And there we go. So this is our latest order that we just created. And our product information is right there. So the next steps, again, you want to hook this up to Zapier. You want to write some code. If you're interested in Zapier, we have a lot of videos on that to do all sorts of really specific stuff with Zapier. Check out those videos. They're on our YouTube channel. We also have documentation on our website. And you can also go to zapier.com and browse there. There's a lot of people that have posted a lot of their uh, tasks, their zaps that they've created that integrate with WPL export. So check those out. Thanks for watching, and we will see you soon.